Hello there, welcome to another Genesis Models live session. If you remember last week we were working on our MiG-15, we were spraying it up, doing a load of masking, getting this bit of a complicated bit of masking going on on the nose section. Um, and all I've done off camera since then is just added one or two little panels being sort of um, uh, um, just painting them out, just kind of changing that natural metal finish on a couple of panels here and there. And then, as always, once you've always sort of like finished um, spraying a model, it's always good to just seal it in with a gloss coat. <clears throat> now, I use the uh, what we've got here, we've got the multi surface wax pledge. You know, I brought this years ago because it just lasts for ages which is why we like using it. It's cheap, it lasts for ages, um, but over the years, um, the brand has changed, the name's changed, but the formula's still there. And I know you guys on the forum always sort of keeping on top. So it's good to, to check out the forum, the Genesis Models forum, um, just to kind of keep up to, to date with that. Um, and although it's a floor cleaner and it sounds a bit you know, cuckoo, um, it really does the job very, very well, um, which is why we seem to like it. And um, a couple of years back, we had Alclads 2. They came out and, is that focusing? Uh, Alclads 2 did come out and release the Alclads 2 um, Aqua Gloss, which is ALC6. Hundred. Um, now this stuff was very, very close to our pledge floor cleaner. Um, that you could almost say there was some sort of um, closeness in the formula there. Um, so if you did want to sort of, you couldn't get hold of, shall we say, the the pledge floor cleaner because I know in some countries it's different and it's hard. You can actually buy something that's very similar and does the same job as well. Um, it's really, really easy. I mean, you don't even have to. Uh, fill it down, go straight into the colour cup and you just nicely mist it on, do about two or three coats and then really you want to leave it overnight to dry, you want this stuff to properly cure because what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be putting decals on but by putting decals on as well, to do it nice and professionally we're going to add decaling solutions and by putting decaling solutions on, I mean these decaling solutions, I mean they're not going to really affect your paint work, but if you've got, you know, just sprayed on gloss and it hasn't, although it, I mean, it really does feel touch dry after just a couple of minutes, but you want it to cure down to the bone. So you want it to leave it overnight because what will happen is if you sort of put Declan solutions on, you'll see like little sort of white, white hazes going on around um, where you put the decal down and that's just the decaling solution sort of sort of eating into your gloss coat a little bit uh, you haven't necessarily destroyed your model if that ever happens because you know give your decals time to dry and spray another gloss coat over the top and it normally cures the problem but you want to play it safe so leave it overnight to dry so let's just get you on the workstation now <coughs> bring you around um, just to you know throw out the usual there we do have the the comment box there so just you know make any comments you know questions answers whatever you want and i'll uh you know do my best to answer them while we are live right then so we've got our decal sheet here in all honesty um these are oh actually these are this is a good one to look for is normally you'll see something that says printed by um cartograph or cartograph.com made in italy these are up there as one of the best set of decals you can have so these are going to be really good to play with right a uh, little tip also is i like to sort of put a bit of our masking tape just on here just to keep our protective sheet on top just a little tip right then so what we're going to do may as well get rid of that now though um, what we're going to do is cutting these off there's a couple of ways you can do it i mean you can just use some good old scissors um, what we want to do is it won't be such a bad idea to get the booklet out 
Right, I like to sort of have this in front of me, orientate it and whatnot, just to make sure we're uh, putting the decals down right. And what's cool about, you know, pretty much nine times out of ten, the instructions will have, like, it will show panel lines. So we can use these panel lines as a guide for placing down decals. So good to have the instructions out in front of you. Um, so what we're going to need... Um, we're gonna let's do these 25s actually they're just on the side normally got a nice number on the instructions uh, correspond that number onto the decal sheet as i say we can use scissors but you know what a blade is just as good right and we can just nicely cut this off it might not be a bad idea before you start cutting to maybe um rotate the the decal film in the light and you'll just see the edges of the decal films because sometimes some really complicated decals you might have a clear bit of film go somewhere and if you cut across the clear film you could end up cutting other decals uh, just a little something to keep a note on but this one is pretty uh, straightforward um, so what we've got to do we've got our 25 here and remember we cut off the last 25 last week all right so let's get them to and what we're going to do is the first way we're going to go about this is well we're going to make sure we're going to get this right so get our 25 nice little tool is to get out some tweezers Right, just so we can hold them. Just off camera, I've got some warm water. You know, it doesn't have to be like boiling hot or anything like that. Really, you just don't want it to be cold. If you've got cold water, what will happen is you can potentially, the decals, they can crack through the shock of being in cold water. So lukewarm water is just good. Uh, and what we've got here is we've got some water on there. It's going to need some time now to just soak a little bit. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. Whee. There we go. It needs a bit of time to maybe just soak in. May as well throw both of these in the water while we're at it. Right. So while they're just soaking in, we don't want to try and move them straight away and force them to move. Just let them do their thing. Then we've got... Um, there's lots of Declan solutions. Uh, maybe while that's setting, we'll just talk through. We've got Micro Set, Micro Sol. It's like a nice little combo. That's what we're going to be using tonight. But then, I mean, there's all sorts in here. We've got the Mr. Mark range. Um, this is kind of good for you, like um, Hazagawa, Tamiya. Um, type kits because it's you know it's made in Japan and they seem to have this as a better formula for those kind of kit decals um, but you know what I mean you know everybody's got some Declan solutions we've got um, Ravel's there is a nice little set in here as well which is um, by um, what's that um, Daco products and what we have here is we have a soft, medium, and there's a hard one somewhere in my drawer. There we go. Just like so. Um, loads and loads of different sort of products you can go out there and you can go out there and buy. Uh, you can use also... Where's it gone? <clears throat> I know this might seem a little bit different, but actually Tamiya... Tamiya Acrylic Paint X22A Thinners. I know this is a thinners for paints, but you know this is one that you can also use. Um, you can use IPA as well. What you've got to sort of remember with decals is because there's so many manufacturers out there um, of different types of decals, different types of decal films, some are thick, some are thin, um, you know, different decals work best with different Declan solutions some it's good to combine them some are dog awful some are brilliant right um, it's just good to have a good rate of decal solutions but if you're just starting out 
good old good old micro sol and set is a good one to start with well then as you can see these are just these are moving them just very lightly just making sure yes they're coming off the sheet um absolutely fine no no need to add any pressure at all so what we're going to start with is micro set um now this first one is a sort of um it, it smells like vinegar smells like vinegar yeah it smells like vinegar um and what it is is this gets the decal starting to soft soften up it also adds um, a bit of an adhesive quality to it as well all right so i'm just getting out a paintbrush now paintbrush wise i just stick with, i've used this same paintbrush um, ever since I started modeling, to be fair, I'll just keep this one just for deckling. Um, you don't want to be using one that you've used for painting because, you know, any bits of paint on there, these deckling solutions will rehydrate the paint and then you get paint on your model. Just use the same paintbrush for your decals. So what we're going to do is where our decals go in, I'm just putting a bit of this micro set down, right? <clears throat> And this is going to be where we then slide. I mean, maybe we could get out something just to hold that up. Get out some tweezers. Right, and we can then just slide on our number 25 there. Right, and then we want to position it. Right, so for positioning it, um, I mean, we could use cocktail sticks. Now, when you use this, I mean, you want to be very, very light, right? We don't want to be stabbing, piercing the decal film. You know, it's just enough just to sort of move the decal. I mean, you can use your fingers if you want, but you'll find that um, your fingers start to sort of absorb a bit of this, the solution and you could sort of, it's, it's not um you know you can have problems with it but i find that uh you know using a cocktail stick or even a little hand voice here with a sewing needle in there right we can just nicely very lightly touching it and we just fine tune this in position right and then what we can do once we've got that in position get in a little bit more micro set and we can just paint that on top, right? So we've sandwiched that decal now uh, with micro set underneath and on top of the decal. If you need to do any micro moving, maneuvering, after paint brushing that on, do a little bit more if need be, right? And what's gonna happen now is um, micro set is gonna add adhesiveness because we've added it underneath. It's on top as well. It's going to soften it up. It's not going to make it really soft that it smudges or really wrinkles up. It just gets that process starting. Because the whole idea really of decals is um, we soften them up. So they're not necessarily melting, but they're softening up so that they will um, suck into any sort of re uh, recess panel lines, recess rivets, conform around raised areas or anything like that um, and that's what the micro sole is going to do in a bit it's going to really sort of soften it up so it really does conform to all these areas um, and stick it down so it looks as though it's been sprayed on but micro set just gets it started so we want to leave that for a um, a little bit and actually my gun is coming off again i'm just going to put that in my little pot just here and i'm just going to glue that on at the end because if you remember last week that came off then also right, and i just want to put our other 25 just over the other side i mean really i shouldn't have done this one yet because really i mean what you'll find is i like to just do sort of like either do the top then do one side because i mean i'm holding this as you can see um from the left side if i'm trying to do decals both left and right i mean i might end up smudging it with my hand if i just keep it on this right side i know i'm not going to smudge it really so we'll let that um settle for a couple of minutes it doesn't need that long actually um micro set another little tip as well 
Oh, these pots, the amount of times I've knocked them over and it's gone everywhere. I've probably used up more of this solution just knocking it over than I actually have using it. Um, anything, just find absolutely anything. Be creative. I've just found these foams out of some um, e-cigarette things and it just nicely fits in there and it just stops that from being knocked over. Um, but any bits of foam you can find, even just any kind of foam, and you can cut a little circle out. Um, or some people have seen them make stuff and maybe glue a bit of cardboard on the bottom. Uh, totally and utterly up to you. Right. Uh, while that's having a couple of minutes to set, I'm going to... Uh, quickly read any questions you guys might have in the uh, chat section. Um, William Corbin is asking a question about um, spraying primer through your main airbrush or would it be easier to use a spray can um totally utterly honest with you if you've got an airbrush right use the airbrush you've got so much more control with an airbrush over a can if you haven't got an airbrush then you know what get out a can the problem is with cans is um, a few things really i mean one, it's sort of like you totally and utterly have, have no control over the air pressure, right? So, you know, whatever's coming out is whatever comes out. What kind of spray pattern you get is what you get. How thick it's coming out is what you get. Um, all you've got to do is use the spray can once, and then if you've got some left and you decide to put it on a shelf, right, you've got to be sort of careful because this nozzle here will then sort of dry up. You've got to sort of clean the nozzle and everything, or, you know, the next time you use it, it's going to be crap. Um, and the other thing is, is when you get low with a spray can, I do find that, that the last bit in the spray can starts to really sort of splutter and it just makes the spray pattern a bit sort of crap which might not be so bad if you're doing some diy work but fine um small models like this you know that kind of stuff shows up um, so yeah if you've got an airbrush just you know never use spray can again basically um, actually, Ron Stars on about the HMS Victory. HMS Victory has not finished. I've not stopped doing it. Um, it's just a very time-consuming project. Um, and I've got loads of catching up to do because the um, problem is with it is there's so much planking to do. And I've already filmed planking. So I've literally got to plank half a massive Victory model with no filming so i've got to kind of just do a load of work to it without any filming so i've got to kind of get caught up with my work um, and basically take a week off just to plank the underside of it before i can actually do any more footage with it so that's kind of the problem we've got with that i, I, I do intend and i want to um, crack on with it it's just one of those things getting around to doing it um, now this has had a fair bit of time, so a nice couple of minutes. What we're going to do, we're going to get out a cotton wool bird, and we're now going to, you might, um, you probably can't see that on camera, right? But it has just started to wrinkle just ever so slightly, um, and that's okay for a micro set. It won't, shouldn't really wrinkle up any more than that. But if we take this cotton wool bird, don't rub, we're just going to press down and roll it across All right press down and roll it and what we're doing is any sort of pockets of air is just being pushed out or shall we say rolled out any sort of moisture underneath is being rolled out right the decals getting stuck down more to the model All right and there we go that's starting to look good already hopefully as you can see just remember don't um, rub at it because you're just going to peel up the decal um, now 
Now this is where we want to come in straight away with Microsol. Microsol does um, the same as Microset in the sense that it adds an adhesive property to it, but it is a bit more of a stronger solution. Right, so uh, we'll paint this on and what's going to happen is it should wrinkle up a lot more. It should soften up a lot, lot more. Right, and when it all softens up a lot and starts to wrinkle a lot, it just means it can suck in to your recess panel lines, um, can form around um, um, sort of any sort of raised areas or anything. And then what happens is as it dries, it shrinks back, right? But it shrinks back after being sucked into all these recessed panel lines. So it then conforms to the model um, as well as the adhesive property. So that's what's cool about that. Now this particular area here is nice and flat. I'm not seeing any recessed panel lines or anything like that. So really one, maybe two coats on top of this and that should be good. Um, it's a little bit more complicated when you start having recessed area so actually probably a good time to whack out another decal so let's take um, one where it's going to have recessed panel and stuff so we've got 45 43 according to the instructions just here all right so 43 is just these nice little red stars nice roundels this time I'm just going to get off one. There we go. And to be fair, I do enjoy. Ooh, that was close. I do enjoy doing decals. Um, it's. I know some people. A lot of people hate it. To be fair, um, but I do quite like it because um, I, I do find that it's it's one of those things that really starts to bring a model together when you've got lots of nice decals so just add some water to that um just add a bit of quick water you don't really want to be going off by the way um and having say a kitchen paper towel down and having it laying on a kitchen paper towel um because all the water is going to get sucked into kitchen paper towel nice flat cutting mat here um we'll stop that from happening so we'll let that set a bit while i check any questions Uh, yeah, thanks for about um, how you love the, the victory videos. I, I, I do notice that you do like that, um, you guys. So, yeah, I'll try and uh, fit in some time with that. Um, it's just been a busy week this week, to be fair, because um, I don't know if I, uh, I think I mentioned last week, um, a friend of mine is off sick um, at a garage, so I'm sort of filling in for them guys just doing some mechanic work for them this week and a bit next week but should all be good after that yeah so if you need any mechanics come just come to me <laughs> RLM7071 um, We've got a question here about Tamiya reference for um, RLM 70 or 71. Um, when, it, when it comes to trying to find out paints and paint colour matches, it's always a good one to, to just really search the web. I know it's a bit time consuming, but there are, there are sites out there which will kind of say, you know, RLM um, 70, 71. You've got Tamiya's match is such and such a paint colour and stuff. I mean, there's just so many colours out there. I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, just, just kind of Google it. And it, there, it, there is a lot of information out there. But um, in, in all honesty, I mean, I tend to not stick with one paint range. I just kind of go, right, I'm building a model. Uh, what's the best colour match? find the best color match are you doing google searches and whatever brand of paints it is i'll just go out and buy them so this one's now moving so we can follow the process again 
Okay, so let's go to our micro set. Now this area is a bit more heavy, well it's heavier in recessed panel lines. So um, I'm just sort of looking at my instructions just over here and what we want to do is we look at all the recessed panel lines that's on the instructions and correspond that to the model. So around about here is where this decal is going to go. Um, also, I mean, as much as you can slide these decals off, like I've already showed you, I do tend to kind of just pick it up with a paintbrush. Um, that's just one little habit I've sort of picked up. Right. And then that's on, but not quite in position. So I'm now just looking at those recessed panel lines, which it looks like this square box this square box just here kind of just touches the corner there and then we need to make sure the star is it looks like it's following this panel line running across here parallel with that Right. And actually the point of that star there goes in line with this little box just here. So it is just fiddling around, seeing where everything lines up with everything on the model and on the instructions. Right. Now with these type of ones, the first one isn't so bad. Um, it's actually when you put the second one on you kind of want to sort of make sure they line up when you look at it from a bird's eye view um, so just kind of keep that in mind when you put the second one on so I'm just fine-tuning this making sure it looks good and I think we're we're looking fairly in position there I think maybe bring it up a little bit so you kind of like move it and then you've got to move it back in another way and it's just slight micro managing so this is why you can tell it's live because I'm really sort of making sure it's just right and that can take a little bit of time which you do have plenty of time. This microsol is going to stay wet for a bit. You're going to have time. Sorry, micro set's going to stay wet for a bit. This is why you don't jump in straight away with microsol. If you move, jumped in straight away with microsol, this would start softening up pretty quick, and you'd start sort of smudging and tearing it and stuff, and you wouldn't have so much time. So that's why we we like to use the old micro sol first but okay i think we've got played around with that enough so again let's get some micro set paint this on top and hopefully i don't move it as i'm painting it on top we'll give that a couple of minutes to work into there while now our 25 here is looking uh, like it's dry it's look it's not dry underneath and stuff but it sort of looks dry so you know what we can whack on another coat on top of that and that should be it for this one because as i say there's no recessed panel lines or anything like that so let's just leave that to soak in a bit well i'll just read some comments Okay, um, Mike wants to know of a good recommendation, 148 scale for aircraft, for a beginner. I will say pretty much nine times out of ten. I know you've mentioned um, jet aircraft, right, but for a be I, I know when you first get into this hobby, you 
I, you know, you, you want to go for the really cool stuff. I mean, so many people have come to me and they're like, I've started and I want to build something like a um, F-14 Tomcat or something. Because, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's, you know, you really sort of mojo's going and everything. Um, and as much as you want to do these aircraft, you know, as a beginner, you want to sort of take it um, nice and easy. And big recommendation would be Tamiya's 148 scale Spitfire Mark One. You know, it's pretty cheap. I know it's World War Two, but for a beginner, it's just it just goes together so nice and easy. There's not many decals involved. Um, it's a fairly easy paint job to do. Um, Airfix, they do a nice Seafire 148 scale. Um, if you've really got your heart set on a jet, I know someone has, um, uh, what was it, the uh, 262, the, the German fighter jet. Um, but trying not to sort of go into something like an F-14, uh, F-15s. Um, those kind of big aircraft tornadoes, they are quite complicated builds because of their sort of double air intake and everything. It's a bit of a mess, um, really, as, as, as a beginner. Um, if you sort of really want to do a jet, I mean, an F-16, uh, maybe. Or actually, I mean, to go even more simply, I mean, you've got the Red Arrows, you know, a Hawk T1 trainer. Um, something like that that hasn't got those two big... Um, um, air intakes on it because those are quite complicated builds. I mean, having a build that has something like two fuselage halves coming together and then you know just stick two wings on it's pretty sort of simple. Um, those are good, good sort of builds for, for, for a beginner. Just try not to aim too high because you don't want to be starting this and you know end up doing something really hard, really complicated, and you sort of lose the love for the hobby before you even get started because you've tackled something so so big but yeah tamia's 148 scale spitfire absolutely dream to build as your first build and it's pretty quick to build as well so you know you're not going to be spending ages doing it so then you can sort of move on with your jets and stuff um but let's get back to the build right then so um, this has had a nice bit of time, so again we can get out our cotton wool bud, maybe bring you in, really not too far, it's a little hard to play around with the zoom on this, right then, so just check, make sure it's still in the position you want it to, make sure you haven't knocked it, and then we can just from the centre roll the cotton wool bud outwards. Right. I mean, actually, after you've rolled it a bit, I mean, you'll feel it sort of stick down. And you could maybe do a little bit of dragging, but it's not highly recommended for a beginner. So that should nicely start to get all the air out. And it does start to push down onto those recessed panel line areas. All right. Because really, I mean, this is one of these things that you sort of notice a beginner to an intermediate to an advanced modeler is if they do these stages. Because, um, I don't know, maybe a basic modeler might have just stuck that down like that. And then they would have painted on maybe a quick bit of micro sole. Right, and then pretty much sort of leave it like that. And then when they come along and do a um, panel line wash, say, you'll see all these panel lines, they'll get covered in um, some sort of panel line wash. But when they hit those decals, all of a sudden it stops. You don't get that sort of black line go through because um, the decals stop in it and the um, wash isn't getting in there because you haven't really sort of taking care of your, your panel lines um so that's where you know sort of like you get that professional edge because you know we're going to keep applying our micro sole right and get it to suck into these decals as much as possible and then you know once we've maybe done you know two or three coats right we're going to start cutting into it now just double checking our 25 here and 
around you know that's looking pretty solid i'm not seeing any sort of um <clears throat> Silvering. Silvering is where you sort of see this silvery haze sort of maybe in and on the decal. That is just trapped air getting um, underneath the decal, right? If that ever happens, and we're going to do this on this one as well. Um, I probably shouldn't do this so soon, but it is live and I don't want to be, you know, waiting around for stuff to dry. But you should leave this a bit longer before you cut this like I'm going to. But if we had a bit of silver in here, we'd just sort of very lightly, with our blade, just score it across. Right, you really don't want to press down hard at all, because you don't want to be cutting into the paintwork, just a little score. And then we get out the old micro sole. And what will happen, because we've like cut that decal a bit, it's going to be able to, the decking solution is going to be able to get in, underneath the decal the air is going to, going to be able to get out and out of the decal um, and you know switch places and then that should stick down nicely but as i say you need to be careful how hard you cut it it's better to go lighter um, than you think because i've already noticed i've cut that a little bit too much and i've sort of cut into the paintwork which i shouldn't have done um, but there we go a lesson for you to learn um, so this now, it's hard to see because it is silver, but this here as now, you know, you can just see all these tiny little wrinkles going all the way around. I don't think you can see it, um, to be fair. You might just be able to see that on camera, but it's starting to wrinkle up. At this stage, you don't want to be applying anymore. You don't want to touch it because if you touch it, it's just going to crease up go horrible some decaling solutions really sort of like work at the decal so much so that um, you could smudge it and it's almost like it's melted so you just really want to leave that and let that those um, creases settle down go flat again um, and as I say they'll work into the recess panel line so we do need to to leave that one now um, hopefully not too long because we are live but I'll um, check out any questions you guys might have. Hello from Dan from Brazil. Nice to hear from you all the way over there. Uh, William Corburn is on about what gloss coat I used. Uh, mentioned at the beginning, I've been using the old um, Pledge multi-surface wax clear. Um, yeah, best to go to Genesis Models website um, on the forum section. There's a massive post with a massive amount of information. I posted up there of all the different brands that have that formula in of even all the different countries. Um, and it, it's you know it's better than a lot of gloss coats out there that you can go out and buy that's supposed to be gloss coats. Um, so don't be scared that it's a floor cleaner. Um, Edward Millership is on about the Mr. Mark softener and setter. Um, okay, let's just get these bad boys out wherever they've gone. All right, Mr. Mark Softener and Setter. They are like a, a Japanese company that do these. I find these are strong solutions, right? And, you know, for stuff like Tamiya, um, Hazagawi, those Japanese kind of companies, their decals are normally quite tough, right? And these decking solutions, as I say, seem to be a bit stronger and they will sort of, you know soften them tougher decals up easier if i was to use this on our um, cartographer decals for this one which i know these cartograph decals work lovely with micro sole and set right if i was to use mr mark range on this it would really sort of attack it um, and potentially attack it so much that you could end up messing them up it could just melt them and you know make it all horrible um but for stuff like tamiya decals and has they do work well um 
a few things about the uh, sometimes you can get away with actually just using the mr mark setter um, it's just kind of really if you've got a stubborn decor use the softener so you can just get away with buying just that i do find as well uh which one was it i think it was both of them uh yeah i think it was both of them or was it the mr mark softener um one of them um it doesn't have a good capillary reaction to it it tends to like go onto the model and bead up and that can sort of leave marks because it sort of pulls up like raindrops on your model um, which then kind of where those raindrops are will really give you an intense bit of say the mr mark softener what you want it to do is to be a nice equal film covering all the decal nice and equally so i i do find that adding i do uh, where is it? to show you i do add um probably like a mil's worth of flow improver to my mr mark softener i think i did it with mr setter as well i have to sort of recap on that one um, but i've done videos about these adding the the flow improver and what it does it, it's it sort of um makes it less um sort of pooling up and sort of makes it flow more which is what it says on the tin um so it's it's a bit more advanced sort of using these shall we say um you always want to start off with micro salt and set because they're not as strong um but you don't want to be starting off with too strong that it kind of melts your decals and makes a mess so i tend to find that <clears throat> when it comes to picking the right decaling solution Mr. Mark Sol, Sol, Sol and Set's always a good place to start. Um, some decals you might find, you know, they're just not wrinkling up or anything like that. So you might want to try a different brand. Um, you might find that Mr. Mark Softener or Setter doesn't work. So, you know, maybe try um, Tamiya um, X20A, maybe some IPA, maybe try some of the um, um, Daco products, Deckling Solution. I've got three different setting, uh, three different strengths. Um, and if all else fails, you know, I mean, this is going into another subject here, but um, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, what we use to glue the models together, this stuff will melt any sort of decal out there this is an absolute last resort if you've got an absolutely stubborn one nothing else is working you just really 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 carefully absolutely mega carefully you just touch it once right just once just touch that decal where it's really stubborn and what will happen is is it will just melt straight away and it'll just melt right to the model right but if you touch it more than once and you start sort of painting with it, it'll just smudge it all, smudge all your paintwork, wreck everything. Um, it is a last resort because you can mess everything up. But just a little tiny touch. Um, and you really want to make sure when you do do it is that you really sort of get all, uh, really sort of make the paintbrush have as little of this stuff on as possible. You know, it's really sort of, almost getting it to like a dry brush like i'm just doing it getting it all off and then you just lightly touch it once and just wait and see and it should just melt it right down um but yeah that's that's if you're having sort of really real problems with the decklings but we've got nice decals here now this is um i don't know if you can see that but you know all the wrinkles have now gone out of that so that's good now for another coat all right this is why it's probably good to be you know doing loads of other different decals as you go along all right because you don't want to keep just waiting for one decal to just dry a bit and then add a bit more micro sol all right so that's got an, another second coat Right, and after that coat, we'll leave that to dry for a bit now. So I'm going to quickly read any comments you guys have got. <clears throat> I 
Oh, thanks, Keith. Keith um, already knew the adding a bit of flow improver trick uh, to stop it pulling up. Uh, Jeff, good comment there. Um, it would be great to see um, Eddard make this into a 148th scale because to be fair, the surface detail on it is really nice. It has built together really, really nice. Um, I don't think I have seen them do it in 148th scale, upscale it. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice. Uh, yeah, Edward Miller ships just saying um, couldn't find any micro solid set at the local model shop So ended up with mr. Mark um, Yeah, I mean it's it's not one to sort of start with if it's your first time using Declan solutions I'd say mr. Mark range because it is a strong solution um, And it can sort of really wrinkle up your models Just just remember to just be re really careful because it's really going to react pretty quick um, especially with some decals there's some decals that are really really thin and they just wrinkle up like a mad at her. Um, so you really want to sort of just apply the stuff and just leave it alone just do not touch don't reapply don't do anything else just let that dry and let those wrinkles just disappear on its own um, nice and naturally um, if, if you're using Mr. Mr. Mark and you've got nothing um, else but um, if you do check online I know a lot of online model shops you know you'll find micro solid set I mean eBay you know if you're a bit stuck for, for, for them um, so um, now this hasn't wrinkled up much and it's sort of gone down because we're on our second coat here so the wrinkling does kind of stop um, uh, I, I want to. I don't really want to do this now, but I'm live. But you do want to sort of let our decal dry. Um, but what we're going to do is we've got our recessed panel lines, and to get that professional finish where our washes will go in to where our decals are and fill in the recessed panel lines where the decals are, is just to get a blade, right? And you very carefully just cut just lightly almost let the weight of the blade just lay on and into that recessed panel line All right now i'm being really careful because this is still slightly wet right but remember i'm live so you're going to leave yours to dry for a bit right because if it's wet like this one is and you're not careful it is going to tear or pull or crease all right so make sure yours has dried for you know i mean really you want to probably leave it for half an hour to to nicely dry but yeah you just follow those recessed panel lines with a blade very very carefully using the weight of the blade just to cut into them and then once you've cut into them like that we just get out our micro sol again and we just cover the mark the piece with the micro sol. So what's going to happen there is the micro sol can then penetrate those recessed panel lines and recessed rivets a hell of a lot easier because we've cut it. That micro sol can get basically in underneath the decal in that recessed panel line. And it just folds it in there. And as it dries and retracts, that's going to just conform nicely to those recessed panel lines. And it'll just end up looking like it's sprayed on, which is exactly what you're after. So hopefully you can see, I mean, that's starting to look good. Um, as I say, this is live, so I'm kind of rushing through it. I'm not really giving everything, you know, the time it needs to dry and stuff. And that's what you need to do. Um, but nicely take your time and paint them on. Maybe just a quickie. Um, have I got any small decals I can put on? Um, because I do go about, I'm going to the stencil section. 
paper stencil section. Hold on. I don't think is there. Maybe it's in the main rule section. I mean, not the rule section. Maybe the main rule book. Rule book? Why do I keep saying rule book? I mean, instruction book. Hmm. Okay. So this is just main markings, and there's no real sort of small ones. So it's quite an easy one to do. Um, but just to kind of quickly sort of walk you through it. With a small decal, because they're small, I do skip the micro set, right? Because um, with a small decal, what I'd do, maybe, maybe I'll use this 25. Let's just pretend this other 25 we've got here is just like, you know, a very small one. All right, so I'd you know dip it into the water. I probably need rehydrating again. All right, and then I'm just going to check see if that's coming off. Yes, it is. So if this is a small decal, let's pretend it's a small decal for this purpose. Um, one, I won't get out the micro set right and put that on. I'd literally just come straight along. All right, I'd, I actually use my paintbrush as well because they're small decals. You can get them on the end of your paintbrush quite easily. Right, and I literally kind of whack them down straight away. All right, then I'll maneuver them. Right, I just want to make sure this is nicely in position. All right now, because it's you know, we're pretending it's a small decal, because it's a small decal, I'll skip the micro set knowing that our micro sole here is going to be able to you know get underneath. The decal because the decal's small um, it doesn't take much for it to get underneath and penetrate the decal um, so it's no big deal plus because it's a small decal i do find microsol does the job good enough and you know what i mean there's some models out there which have got you know you've probably seen them there's so many um stencils tiny tiny little decals going on all over the model that it just takes you forever and to go off and take every single little one adding micro set and then putting the decal on putting micro set on top then rolling it and everything it's it's quite does take quite a long time so i do kind of like to speed things up and just go straight in micro sole and there we go and i do find that micro sole is just enough for small decals because i say it can get underneath the decal because it's a small one all right so we can just leave that and just skip a few, a few things um but that's my personal preference i mean there's absolutely nothing wrong that if you want to go off with your small decals and still follow the full process of using micro set totally and utterly um up to you guys um uh, whichever way you want to go about it um but there we go um so we've pretty much gone through an hour so i'm just going to check any last questions you guys might have uh, no that is it all right so let's just bring you back so sadly we have sort of come to the end of this live session off camera i will just plain and simply whack all the rest of the decals on um make sure they've nicely conformed and everything uh, it is a good idea to sort of let these decals then dry overnight because again it's kind of just like paint i mean this 25 here you know might feel kind of dry um but you know there's still that little bit of moisture just underneath the decal and you do want to make sure that it's properly fully dry so leave it overnight um, I mean, he's saying that I have sort of just left them an hour and then put a gloss coat on top and got away with it. But, you know, to play it safe, let it dry overnight. And then I will go off again. Good old pledge floor cleaner or um, Alclads to um, Aqua Gloss, whichever you prefer. You know spray that on top of the decals so what you've got is these decals have conformed gorgeously to the model because of the solutions but what you've got is um, gloss coat is protecting your paintwork right you've got your decal 
and then you've sandwiched that decal in um, with a gloss coat either side of it and it just really locks it down you know it's not going to come up um, not going to peel away um, it's nicely sandwiched in um, it sort of blends it in as well a little bit um, and it just kind of gives you that perfect you know painted on look for for your decals not only that you do also have the process of you know all the weathering that you're going to do um, after deckling because i know weathering you can go all sorts i mean you've got sludge washes which is water-based we've got like AK, we've got ammo, which are like enamel based weathering products, and you can do all sorts to it. Um, and, and gloss coats are just plain and simply good to, to sort of lock your work in to save it, um, to stop any sort of you know reactions to say your decals and making them come up or, or anything like that. Because I know in the past I've sort of uh, maybe not put on such a good gloss coat and then I've used a weathering product and that weathering product has then somehow attacked the decal, got underneath the decal um, and it just makes a nasty sort of stain on the decal and it makes it look horrible. Um, so it is good to make sure you kind of seal it in with a gloss coat, maybe two or three coats. Actually, just thinking about that, there is another stage that I did forget to mention. Um, when you let this dry, it's going to be a good idea to get out um, um, maybe like a kitchen paper towel um, and just a little bit of a, a moist kitchen paper towel and where you've got your decor after they've all dried and everything uh, maybe the next day they're all on they've all dried properly cured uh, before you put your gloss coat on is just to kind of give them a rub around the edge just to sort of clean them up because these decking solutions they can leave a uh, a little bit of a stain I mean you might not be able to see it um, but there's maybe a little bit of a residue left behind um, it doesn't happen all the time but sometimes you know it can sort of um, you know stop your gloss coat from going down as good so just a little bit of a clean up in that area uh, removes any sort of leftover decklin solution so then when you put your gloss coat on top um, you know it's going to gloss it on a lot better and um, lock it all in nicer so just a little bit of a, a clean up there um, so we've got no more questions said a uh, little question from hawk boy about microsol and set is it okay to use the same paintbrush um i mean it would be better to maybe have a different paintbrush, um, but you know what? I do kind of tend to sort of um, just very, very quickly, sort of like I'm using micro set, I'll dip it in. If I'm going to use micro sole, I'll maybe sort of just wipe it on the side just there so it just sucks up most of it, and then I'll um, use micro sole. Um, it shouldn't really matter a little tiny bit of contamination, but I mean, it's up to you, it's your, your personal. I've not had any problems with. You know a slight bit of a contamination but if you want to use two different paintbrushes totally and utterly up to you um so yeah apart from that um usual at genesis models go check out the genesis models website we've got forums we've got all the videos there you know i mean this is live but there's loads of tutorials on there which is like properly edited and stuff so it's a little bit faster paced um video builds going on um and, and all sorts of goodies um inbox reviews um reviews of paints and all sorts and um yeah you'll find everything i've basically said here in the live session over there in all the videos so um if you want to check that that out we've got the group build going on at the moment which is 170 second scale and um, still plenty of time to sort of get in on that build one and then there's trophies at the end of it around about end of december time or something i forgot what the date was um, but yeah go check that out and um, you'll find out more stuff for genesis models but hopefully you have enjoyed our live session so until next time my name is paul Waldron, this is genesis models and i'll catch you next time